Hey there, we're out here in the garden today. Let me show you exactly what we're gonna get into. We've gotta get these potatoes in the ground. I'm here with my potato bed. That's what's got the little cross over it there. Um, the PVC is what we will put the netting on once we get the potatoes planted out. But first of all, we gotta get the potatoes in the ground. Then we gotta cover them with a little bit of straw. Clark, go on, go lay down. Clark pushing them around does not help much. Not He's not really pushing them, but being near them, <laughs> they don't like that. So anyway, we're gonna put the potatoes in, plant them out. We put some fertilizer as we go. That way, hopefully they'll grow really, really well. And then we'll cover them over with some pine straw. And then finally, we will cover over both of them with uh, some netting, that netting that we grabbed at Walmart not too long ago. Finally, the potato beds are a little bit dry so that we can actually plant this stuff out. And also my potatoes have sprouted nicely. So I'll show you those as I'm planting them out too. Um, the timing actually worked out pretty well because the potatoes have chitted, sprouted basically and they really look better at this point to go into the ground anyway. Today is the day we're gonna plant out both of these potato beds. I'll show you the potato bed. It looks like nothing in the ground um, at this point because there's really no exterior around this one or anything. It's just literally uh, an area that we tilled up. About six weeks ago, I guess we tilled it with the big tiller that we have and um, we put in at that time compost and fertilizer and I guess that's it. Just about two days ago, I took off the tarp is right here. I took the tarp off and I worked it again with the rake and with my, um, look at that turkey. See, this is how this happens. Turkeys come in if they want to come in. Yeah, so she wants to come in um, and she will. That's why they have to be covered over. <laughs> here she goes. What a turd. Anyway, so we worked a bunch of stuff into the soil at that point, and today it is nice and dry or dry enough for things to be planted out here. I'm not exactly sure what my game plan is, if I'm going to make rows or hills, or I don't actually know quite yet. Okay, so I have about an hour. That's what I would like to spend on putting these potatoes in the ground. Hopefully I can do that and um, we'll see exactly how quickly I can get this done. So I have one potato bed here. I'm gonna outline it with some of those uh, metal pipes that I have right there, just so you can, and I can see it a little bit better, a little more clearly. And then I have one potato bed on the other side of the garden over there, which we'll get to next. So I've got two types of potatoes. One is a white Kennebec, and the other is the red Lesota potatoes. So I will put one in each of the beds. So I think we'll just start I'm not sure. Let me look and see exactly how many of each of the potatoes because one I do have more than the other. Clark came in. This bed here is a little bit bigger than the other one, so we'll just put the one with more in this bigger bed. white Kennebec in this bed here. 
So I'm just going to put them along, space them out, and then I'll come back through and just cover them over. And then we'll do the straw after this. Also going to be using this today. This is like a little bit that goes on your drill. Not that way. This way. To help you make holes really quickly and evenly. So even though I don't want to plant these potatoes down super deep, I want to make a little bit of a hole under them just to make sure that the ground is nice and loose around them. That way they can make potatoes. So I'm just going to drill a hole for each one, set it in nicely, make sure it's nice and aerated, and then I'll cover them all over. This is definitely the most time consuming part of this process is putting these into the actual ground and then covering them over. So it took me a few minutes to get this done, but it'll go by quickly for you, of course. Um, today, I wanted to make sure that I told you that I'm gonna link all of the things that I use to plant this potatoes, these potatoes out. Um, including like the little drill attachment and all that stuff. But I don't link those things in the description so that you will buy them or anything like that. But sometimes if you're curious like me, I just want to know what something is and know a little bit more about it. So that just gives you an easy place to click through and see exactly what I'm using. And then if you want to buy it, that's great. But if not, you've got a place to start like, oh, okay, that's what that drill attachment is. So just so that you are aware and then you can see in one easy place as well, like how much the things are, like how much is the fertilizer and how much is the netting that I bought and that type of stuff. So just as a quick reference for you, but anyway, um, I'm just getting these all into the ground and then I will get them covered over really quickly. I have about six or eight inches of space in between each of the potatoes. And this bed is probably, I think it's around 10 feet long and four or five feet wide. So it's pretty good sized bed. And I've ended up using about six or seven pounds of potatoes per bed. So that's just what I had on hand. That's how much I use. I just kind of spaced them out according to the amount that I had there and got them into the ground. Okay, that's got the first one done. At least everything's planted out in there. I'm going to run over into my shed over there and grab my pine straw, spread the pine straw, put the... Uh, PVC back over top and then we will cover it over with the netting in just a little bit but I already know as soon as I'm done as soon as I'm done with this the chickens are going to be right on it so I better just get everything completed at once the PVC that I'm using here today is some that we formerly had attached to some actual raised beds that were this size so we just are reusing it. Those raised beds are no more. They ended up rotting out. So we just kept the PVC and now we can use it to quickly cover over things, throw some netting over top, throw a tarp over the top, whatever the case may be um, for coverage in the winter months or coverage in the summer to keep things from getting eaten by the birds before they sprout up. So this is a good way to go. And then I use the pine straw here just as a little bit of insulation because we are still having some cool nights and then um, the potatoes can sprout through the pine straw because I didn't put so much that it is really going to smother anything out. Nothing like that. Next up is the second bed. Okay, now we're on to the other side of the garden here. I have my terrible looking compost pile down the way there if you see it. I gotta take, I have, right now I have a bunch of boards and weird stuff stacked in there that has to come out and go onto the burn pile, but temporarily it's just in a pile right there. So the other bed is right here between the compost pile and the fig tree that I have here. So this is where the red potatoes are gonna go in. That's these here and they look just as good. So I did the exact same thing. The bed is actually about the same size as the other one. I thought it was a little bit smaller, but it's not. So I'm just gonna do the same exact thing, make three rows in the bed and uh, I put down some fertilizer already. I worked it in a little bit and made my rows. So I'm just gonna go put the potatoes in and then I will use my drill bit again to make the holes a little bit more deep and then cover the potatoes over 
do the exact same thing as I did on the other one. And finally, I will end with covering it with the netting as well. I got it all done. That one is the second bed. That one has the red potatoes in it. The first one had the white potatoes, so I am so excited to be done. Here goes the cat. He's gonna to try to get in there too. It is 11.57, so that took me about an hour and a half to do both of those beds. So I'm really happy with that, and I'm very happy to have that done. <laughs> very happy let's jump in the greenhouse and i'll give you an update on the things that i have seed started in there so far he's walking on the netting hi you guys sheldon can you get off of that let me show you what i'm looking at this is the fun part about starting seeds and you spend a lot of time and uh scouring the soil for any new growth <laughs> so it's it's really actually so fun because you can start to see the tiniest little cracks in the soil sometimes where you're like oh it's about to sprout right there that is a coleus that is finally starting to sprout good job the petunias are actually sprouting too. You can see just the finest little bits of green on the petunias here. Look at this. See how small though, right here? That is so small. The Cosmos always shoot right up, so they look good. They'll be totally fine. They're really one of the hardiest flowers. The Calendula, so I can't wait to put those out this year. All kinds of things growing in now this is tomatoes that i started a little bit later last week when did i start those february 11th is what that says and we have some growth on them that is the tiny spoon tomatoes there starting to come up tomatillos are sprouting they were the first thing to sprout of those whole row of them is sprouted and then cherry tomatoes it looks like got a one or two little sprouts in the back so I'm going to kind of keep this plastic loosely on top here and um, until probably tomorrow and then I'll take that off because they will need to get more sunlight but everything's looking really good this is the cilantro I still never cut it I need to cut it today this is petunias they're just growing on their own that's all just volunteers and everything down here. I tucked in some nasturtium seeds here and they're starting to sprout in here as well. Uh, I think that's a Rebecca, maybe from a volunteer. And everything is just looking beautiful, isn't it? This is just a random array of stuff that I threw in there. Onions, carrots, all kinds of stuff just to keep the soil healthy and growing something. This is petunias in this one too, isn't that pretty? A couple of weeks ago when these first started growing, I went ahead and pinched them and that's why they have more, more areas here that are growing at this point. This dianthus is finally blooming. This is obviously a white dianthus. It just came from a um, hummingbird seed mix last year. <laughs> 